We welcome uh, Mohamed uh, Mustafa, who is going to present his work on Karate, Islam, and Interval Approach. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Mustafa. I'm from the University of Manchester and I'm going to talk about uh, the field of working mapping by using the general methods. So, uh, the outline of this talk is going to be, the, uh, going to be uh, consist of uh, three sections. First, I will give an overview of the voice mapping and give an introduction to this map, where the voice mapping is, uh, is addressed in. And then I'll give a quick uh, overview of the different uh, SCAM approaches that are used uh, in the civic art. Uh, after that, I'll talk about uh, how can we use internal methods to uh, uh, solve a SLAM problem and uh, set some conversion, uh, conversion conditions uh, for, uh, for this particular problem. And at the end, I'll give you some, uh, some, uh, show you some simulation and the result of. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's talk about the uh, SLAM. SLAM stands for Simultaneous Optimization and Mapping, and basically it's an uh, essential component in the robotics uh, community, where we have a robot uh, that is uh, represented by this uh, triangle, and it's moving in an unknown environment. The environment consists of uh, different landmarks. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, in this presentation, we can assume that the landmarks are distinct, and they are point landmarks. Uh, the robot does not have any uh, idea about where these uh, landmarks are, uh, and it doesn't know where it's positioned. So it has to uh, move along, uh, build the map, and at the same time find its position. And to do so, it uses two types of sensors. It has uh, internal sensors that it can tell where it's positioned, and it also can tell where the. It has also a series of sensors that can tell the position of the landmarks with respect to. So, uh, so in this case, uh, the robot moves. When the robot, when the robot moves, it uses the sensor to estimate its position. But the sensor is noisy, so we have some sort of uncertainty. Then it senses the uh, the landmark in the of the robot again because of the uh, sense, uh, noisy sensor. It has some uncertainty, and it does that over time, all the way until it sees something that's seen in the past. When the robot sees something in the past, it can uh, use this information to contract or to reduce the uncertainty of the position of the robot and the lama it has seen so far. So, um, to describe this problem mathematically, right, so uh, what we're going to consider is the robot position is going to be defined by vector sk at times sk. And the landmark position is denoted by the i uh, for uh, nl landmarks in the environment. And we have the uh, basic equation, uh, the evolution equation, or it's called the uh, robot motion equation, which represents the robot position in the, uh, as a function of the previous position that we wrote input. And the second equation we have is the observation model that uh, gives us the information about uh, the position of the landmark with respect to the current uh, robot position. Um, H and J, these two functions, uh, the motion model and the observation model, both of them, they are generally non-linear functions. And uh, for the purpose of the mobile robotics uh, applications, Q and R represent the noise that is associated with the motion model and the observation model. Okay, so uh, the goal of the uh, Fanny Slam approach is to estimate the robot position. SK and the landmark position MI for all k from i up to uh, N, nk, which is the number of uh, frames, and all landmarks one up to nl. Okay, so uh, how to do that? There are different approaches. Uh, the popular ones uh, we have either the uh, probabilistic approach or the interval approach. So uh, the probabilistic approach uh, assumes that the noise 
of the uh, that is associated with each one of the models is uh, has some known probability density function. For example, uh, Q K can be a normal distribution or a Lie distribution or maybe uh, a uniform distribution. However, this distribution has to be known. And uh, some of the popular approaches to, to solve this lamp problem. From a probabilistic, from a probabilistic point of view, is the extended gamma filter slam or fast slam that uses partial filters. So the convergence of these approaches is only guaranteed if the following conditions are satisfied. And the meaning of the convergence here is that uh, the parameters of the slam problem, which are the robot pose and the lambda position, are going to converge to real values at the limit, at k goes to infinity, only if at least one landmark in the environment is known, its position is known in advance. The second thing is that the motion model H and the observation model G are linear functions, and if the noise QK and RK are zero mean Gaussian distributions. Now, uh, and the way that uh, these uh, approaches follow, some of them, uh, uh, like extended common filter and uh, fast lamp, they follow the Bayesian uh, filtering. And uh, what they do is something uh, that um, I think almost uh, everybody knows how it works is that we have a prior distribution in dashed lines. After we have, uh, and this uh, distribution represents the uh, parameters at uh, times 10 k. After applying the motion model, it goes the, uh, the robot blues are certainly represented by the uh, red curve. And then the blue curve represents the uh, observation model. And uh, combining these two information gives us an estimate of the parameters at times 10 k plus 1, and that is represented by the black curve. So now the question here is that is uh, in terms of uh, convergence, uh, this condition might seem a little bit harsh. If we take a look at the uh, the noise distribution, uh, even if the noise of the sensor is not Gaussian, we still can estimate by the Gaussian distribution. The biggest problem that we have here is that the motion model and the observation model, from a practical point of view, they are nonlinear functions. So uh, how can we guarantee the, the convergence in this case? That's why we uh, move to uh, the interval approach, or the interval method slab. And in this case, we assume that the motion uh, model uncertainty, Q and, uh, and the, uh, the observation uncertainty, R, are both, they have bounded distribution. We don't need to know what this, what this distribution is as long as it's bounded, and we don't really have any restrictions on the uh, linearity of the uh, models. In this case, what we can do is we can construct or we can put the slab problem in a constraint satisfaction problem where you have your value, they can be put in a vector or in a box, it's called x, or in a vector, not a box, sorry, uh, x is a vector, and one all the way up to mn, these are the number of landmarks. And all the positions of the robot from time step zero up to the current frame. So uh, the constraint for this uh, constraint satisfaction problems can be derived directly from the observation model and the motion model, and uh, they are represented in these two equations or in these two uh, uh, relations. Uh, and you can see that these relations can be converted easily to. Uh, to a set of inequalities. So uh, with this setup, if we have the set of all uh, inputs from time step uh, zero up to time step k, or nf, and all the observation models, in capital Z, uh, what we can do is we can uh, construct uh, a contractor uh, that is written in this algorithm that goes through uh, all the uh, inputs as well as all of the uh, observation models and try to find the, uh, the smallest box, that, uh, the smallest uh, parameter box that uh, uh, is guaranteed to have a solution for the sample. So uh, we have to uh, now fix the point contractor and we have to go over, over all the uh, time frames and all the landmarks or all the uh, measurements uh, we evaluate the forward computation of the contractor using the uh, motion model 
and then we uh, so they said the, 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 uh, they said that at least three equations they represent the forward backward contractor for the uh, motion model, and they said uh, the equation at the bottom they represent the forward and backward contractor for the uh, that corresponds to uh, the opposite motion. Right, it works fine, but the question that we have here is that uh, and uh, this algorithm returns the x, which uh, is the, uh, the vector for the graphs in this algorithm. So the question that we have now is, does this algorithm guarantee or uh, the convergence of the slam parameters? It's not all of them, maybe a subset of that. So uh, that's what we want to try to do next. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through uh, some theoretical foundation and show that uh, it is possible to guarantee the convergence of a subset of the parameters inside X to the true value at the end. Okay, so uh, just a, a theoretical foundation that has something to do with, uh, with the works that we're going to apply in these propositions and uh, theorems later. So uh, proposition one, assume that we have a map that is uh, diffeomorphic from x to y, and uh, we suppose that uh, f is basically uh, x, uh, it's, it's a, y star is uh, x star. Uh, we assume that we also have a measurement, yk, such that yk is y star plus uh, alpha k, and alpha k here represents the, uh, a noise, a uh, random noise, so uh, uh, iid random noise that has a compact set, sorry, a compact set that is known. So we know the, the support of alpha k, but we don't know the distribution, and we know that it's compact. Set. So uh, we can construct the uh, set capital yk in such way, such as uh, yk equals to uh, the set yk minus e. Just have to point out that this minus here does not mean uh, exclusion; it's uh, element-wise subtraction. Okay. Then the intersection of the inverse of x for k equals to one up to infinity for almost sure is going to go to x star, just the same to x star. And uh, the geometric uh, representation of this proposition can be seen here is that uh, this is our y space and we have the x space. So uh, we have y1, y2, they all include, or y star is included in each one of these uh, sets. So uh, if uh, the mapping between x and y is diffeomorphic, uh, and the, uh, the y set is compact, then we know for sure that uh, the intersection of all of these y is going to be a singleton, and the inverse of that singleton is going to be x. Okay. Next time. Okay. Uh, the second uh, theorem that we have, or the, uh, the second proposition, theorem uh, one, is slightly different than the first one. Here we also have a diffeomorphic uh, mapping from x to y. And the only difference is that our x space is a Cartesian product of uh, m subspace and s subspace. Okay? And uh, what we have here is that uh, we're going to have the same uh, uh, assumption that uh, f of x k star equals to y k star. Okay, such that x k star is m star and s k star. What you should note here is that m does not have the k subscript. The only thing that has the k subscript is the s. Okay. So uh, we have y k is the same as before. Y k is y k star plus alpha, and alpha is a noise that has the support, uh, and support is capital. So uh, by constructing again yk equals to uh, the singleton yk minus e, we can define capital xk equals to the inverse of uh, yk, and uh, mk is the projection of this set on uh, the subspace M. What we can show, or what we've shown, is that uh, the intersection of all of these mk sets of k equals to infinity is almost sure converge to the singleton. Okay. 
And the difference here is that we don't converge to x star, x m star. That's the difference between this proposition here, which converges to x star, but here we converge to m star, which is included in x a star. And uh, the graphical representation of of this proposition is shown here. Okay, so uh, we have the y space and we have the x space. Uh, again, you can see that in the y space, we have uh, y1, y2, y3, they are not necessarily intersecting. Okay, but they do follow that they have to intersect this line over here, the red line. Okay, and by a different morphism uh, transformation, you can show that uh, each one of these sets, okay, its projection in the M subspace is going to intersect this one. Okay, so how does that help us in the uh, robotics mapping? So uh, if you take a look at X as a parameter space, and M is the position of the uh, height time mark, and S is the position of the robot time set A, we we'll take a look at the measurement space where we define the measurement space as y, where yk is the measurement vector acquired by the robot times k. So uh, again, the measurement y, uh, we can also think of alpha k as the additive noise to our observation loop. Okay. And the compact set E represents the, uh, the, uh, the box of q. All, all the possible sets that Q, which is the additive noise of the motion, the observation model that you have. Okay, in this case, so we have the robot, uh, so in this space we have uh, the X space and the Y space, or the Z space. M is the uh, position of the landmark, S is the position of the robot. Okay, we don't have access to this space, but we do have access to the measurement. And this is what we have from the robot sensor. It measures Z1 and Z2. Uh, and uh, yeah, so using the uh, diffeomorphic uh, transformation, we can show that yk is going to uh, map into sk, and the intersection of all of these. Oh, sorry, I just want to show that uh, I want to say that in this case, we're going to assume that the robot is stationary, the robot is not moving. So it means that the Z1 and Z2, they are representing the same quantity, the same distance between the robot and the, uh, and the landmark. Which means that if I have many measurements here, I'm going to have many boxes that are going to intersect at Y star. And this Y star is going to transform into X star so I can tell exactly the position of the robot as well as the position of the landmark. The problem is that this situation is not very realistic. The robot is supposed to be moving in the environment. So let's take a look at the place where the robot is moving. In this case, uh, I'm just going to show you the uh, example of a uh, robot moving in one key, just for illustration. However, the theorem extends to uh, any name. So uh, it does not say that it's only every key. So in this case, uh, we know the position of M1. The robot knows where it is. This is part of the requirements. But it doesn't know where it's M2. It doesn't also know where its position, but it has the ability to measure the distance from the robot to M1 and M2. Okay? So, uh, and again, each measurement is bounded. It has uncertainty, and this uncertainty is bounded by this sort of line. Okay, so uh, what that means, if we go back to our uh, diagram, it means that, uh, okay, it's uh, not exactly correct. Each one of these sets for this particular example has to be a box. Okay, it has that. You should have a box here, a box there, a box here. And you can see that these boxes do not really intersect, but their uh, transformation to the X space using the contractor or using the uh, transformation is going to give us different sets, and these different sets are going to intersect or predict their projection in the uh, position of the landmark. Yeah. They're always going to intersect. So we don't need to know, we don't know the position of the robot exactly, but we can be sure where are the landmarks left off. The only thing that we need to uh, have here is we need to guarantee that the map, it 
between the white space and the X space is diffeomorphism. Okay. And we can do this, we can have this diffeomorphism between the two spaces if we can have some anchoring landmarks or a sufficient point, sufficient number of anchoring landmarks. And the idea of the anchoring landmarks, or the definition of an anchoring landmark is that we know the position of these landmarks in advance. And the minimum number of uh, landmarks that we need to know in advance is depends on the problem and also depends on the observation that you have. For example, if we have uh, if we have a radar that measures the distance and the angle, we need two two uh, two uh, anchoring landmark. If we have only a sensor that measures just the distance, the range only. Uh, Measurement uh, in the range only uh, sensor in 2D, we need three numbers. So, so uh, what we can do now is we can construct our uh, constraint satisfaction problem where we have our uh, space xk equals mu and sk, yk consists of all our measurements to the known landmarks and to the unknown landmarks, and f. Is basically just a calculation of all our observation rules using the first one, the second one, all the way to the And this problem is similar to the uh, SLAM transfer slash problem that we did a few slides ago. Okay, so uh, just to show you an example of uh, applying this method, so uh, we have uh, a robot moving in a two dimensional environment. The stars here represent the position of the landmarks. Uh, we know two landmarks uh, to guarantee the diffeomorphism between uh, the ground space and the, uh, and the uh, metric space. Yeah. And here, what we have here is that the, this is the observational robot. So the robot can measure this is the landmark and the uh, angle. And the measurement is. Uh, it's associated, it has, it includes, or uh, there's some additive noise that is, is, that is associated to each one of the measurements. Alpha in rho and alpha. So rho is the distance, the, uh, the distance and alpha is the angle. Okay, so uh, when we apply this thing, uh, when we apply this method to the uh, retrieval slam, and we compare it with the extended ground filter and the fast slam, uh, so this is what we get from the extended ground filter. Here we have Pass down is on the position of the landmarks, and here is what we have uh, the position of the landmarks using the ice dam. You can see that they are comparable. Uh, the reason why uh, the extended camera filter has bigger, uh, the ellipse here represents the uncertainty of 99%. Uh, the reason why we have uh, bigger uh, ellipse here is because uh, we can't initialize, uh, I didn't initialize this properly, I didn't, I didn't specify. Which one of these landmarks is the anchor landmark? But we can compare the past slam and the ice slam to see what they are. Uh, this is the evolution of the uh, width of the box, boxes that we estimate over time. And you can see they are not really different. Okay, one more time. Okay, so uh, just a summary. So, uh, the, uh, the inverse map can address the quartz map problem in the context of your methods where the uh, sensor noise is unbounded. If you don't have any prior knowledge of the uh, noise distribution or the probability density function, you can still derive some necessary conditions to uh, guarantee the convergence of the map, not the position of the robot, but the map itself. And uh, we'll show some uh, comparison between the problems in Slack. Let's be watching. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mustafa. Are there any questions, please? Yes, please, please. Uh, so, in, the, in your problem, uh, of such problem, you assume that you have some uh, landmarks uh, below their position. So, I can show you the landmarks. That's true. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, in this case, you don't need to know the initial position of the robot, no? No. So, 
Yeah, okay, so it's basically the slug problem is because the fact that you have some uh, uh, N, uh, uh, how many unsuring? So I didn't understand exactly how many unsuring landmarks do you need? It, it depends on the uh, problem if you're moving from 2D or 3D. It also depends on your uh, motion model. You need to have an the anchoring mark, landmark should uh, give you the uh, the uh, should ensure the diffeomorphism between the boundary okay. space and the uh, so so if you, if you are in two D in two D this example and if you have a compass only one one ensure is needed in this problem in this particular one we need to we have yeah. only a compass yeah. you have a compass here. Uh, so this is the motion, this is the observation model. I have, uh, it's a laser scanner, so it can tell me the distance between the robot and the robot, yeah. and the angle. Yes, but you have a compass on the robot. No. Okay, that's why. If you have a compass, only one is sufficient, maybe. Maybe, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a combination of the sensor. It, as I said, it depends on the sensor and the... Uh, okay, yeah. okay, then. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Abad, for the presentation.